Hello YouTube, it's CTC Ben here with a video. It's been a long time waiting for an update on this. But here's the 1964 Motorola I pulled from Iowa a couple weeks back. Well, maybe a couple months back by now. I've been waiting to do an update on this, but I've been working on some kinks on it. But as you can see, this cabinet is in excellent condition. And might I say, for me, excellent taste. I love French Provincial stuff, of course, I grew up around it. My grandparents always had French Provincial. So, very nicely built. I'm getting a couple extra shadows because of my new studio lights. But, um, here's the control layout. As you can see, it's got a color indicator for when a color channel comes on because I guess story goes back in the day there weren't that many color programs so people would have their color turned all intensity that would be right there turned all the way down and then when a color program would pop up that color logo would pop up and uh, you'd know you got a color channel so uh, that does not work with my modulator I've tried it in black and white and color so it must have been something from back in the day someone pr probably could explain that a little better um, but th this is a projection display, which um, projection displays on YouTube has been, have become very popular. I will show that when the set is powered on. The projection display, it uses lenses which project from a light into that little tint tinted piece of glass there. So it's in rather great shape. As you can see here, your vertical brightness tone and contrast all there it's rather rare to find one of these from 1964 the earliest I've seen them is 1963 when they came out um, of the production line but why these are rare is because of the 23 EGP 22 and um, I'll do a little speech at the end of this video about my blog but I wrote a little paper in there about this um, they were the early Rectangular first mass produced rectangular color CRT by Motorola and National Video. And uh, they were very, they used a black and white style envelope with the anode on the side, and they're very prone to going bad, going to air. Just, they're just not very good. The quality at National Video Corporation was not up to par with the quality that Motorola put out. So. This set's got a few bugs I've yet to work on, but once it warms up, like I, I, I've i been watching it every day now for about a month. Um, once it warms up, the bugs go away, so I'm certain that there might be some re, um, reforming caps I need to check out with my new capacitor wizard. Or something going on, just along the lines, because I replaced all the bad tubes, checked all the tubes like I normally did to get this set going. Replace the horizontal output tubes because it uses dual 6JM6s, which is a very affordable tube. So it's kind of that's kind of a pro to having one of these is that the tubes in it aren't that expensive other than the EGP, which you won't find um, anywhere. This is an RCA branded 23 EGP 22, which um, was a replacement. Uh, somewhere along the line a rather grade a replacement so that means it uses RCA phosphor I believe it's a complete rebuild so it really produces a fantab a fantastic picture so I'll get it ready and have a video of it working now here we have period crack for 1966 or 68 at least color broadcasting via dark shadows. As you can see on the side here, there is a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, static, but that usually goes away as the set warms up. Like I said, these things aren't perfect, but this one produces a fantastic picture. It's got a lot of contrast to it, so you gotta be careful of the contrast, uh, you know, overdrive your CRT but the color range is perfect uh, I'll include more pictures of the color on this TV but um how about I be quiet now we watch the TV go
I have decided to believe your reason will not prove the experiment. I don't think you lied to me about that. Isn't it a little late to bring that up now? The more I think of it. Excellent tent range. Somewhere in between there. See, there's a contrast. That's about perfect. Brightness. It's got plenty of brightness. There's your projection display working. Rather fantastic. The thing is, I wish I would have shown it in the video I already took of the back. But there we go for this part of the video. Um, like I said, that there, when it warms up, goes away. I'm not quite sure what causes that. I've been through this set a couple times and still trying to figure some things out. But this is where I am with it anyways. And there we go. Here we are at the back of the set. It's rather zenith like if you haven't noticed all the hand wired um, terminals. But you'll notice a very long flyback cage on the opposite side of where they would normally be. That is a transformer right there, and that is the flyback cage. You'll notice the anode is on the side of the CRT, would normally be on the top there. And all the yoke. It's rather overbuilt, and it has dual 6JM6 horizontal output tubes. Um, why they did this, I asked an expert, or who I consider to be an expert, and he didn't know. The best I can find is maybe they went around so many different ways to avoid RCA patents, is what I'm thinking, but I could be corrected again. Um, really overbuilt set overall. I mean, as you can see, the chassis can, takes up the whole width of the cabinet. It's, I'll show the convergence panel at the end here where that pops out, but it's rather, rather convenient because the convergence panel is connected to the screen controls and that's all at the front of the set. And that's, that on the RCA would normally be right there. So... Rather neat setup, very Motorola. Here is the convergence panel, which I promised to show at the end of the video here. As you can see, the adjustments for the green guns and the screens, and the, or the drives and the screens, I mean to say, are right there. And there's your convergence panel all nicely written out and that's hidden right behind the speaker so that's pretty well engineered GE did this too and a few other manufacturers but um, Motorola most noteworthy did it and they're in uh, I even find their works in a drawer uh, where you adjust the convergence to be pretty handy. Wish more manufacturers would have caught on to this, but putting it in the back on a screen was or on a on a piece of board was just a lot easier. This is just one heck of a way to do this. And Zenith did this too in the later 60s, so I shouldn't disqualify Zenith either. So uh, thank you for watching this video and please subscribe and if you're interested in my TV restoration or anything more uh, Please visit my website at ctc-ben.com. I'll put a link in the description um, You can see my blogs and ramblings and what I'm up to so thank you